The Feral Tank is one of the best tanks in the game and they do as much damage as a normal DPS. And for some reason, you apes don't wanna play them nearly as much as you should as they are one of the least popular classes in the game, even though they are also the easiest. I came to change that. We are gonna see the talents, glyphs, stats, rotations, cooldowns, professions, gems and the enchants you're gonna need to become the most powerful bear since Xi Jinping took power. This is your talent setup right here, you may want to change this build NEVER as it will always be the best build in every situation. I know my fellow druid players, so don't worry, I'm gonna do all the thinking for you, it's for the best. For Prime Glyphs we're gonna take the Glyph of Berserk as this is one of your most important threat generation bonuses and you will see the more abilities that you spam, the tankier you become. Then we take the Glyph of Lacerate for free crit as crits give you free rage and on top of that every time you crit you get savage defense that reduces the damage you take the next hit. And Glyph of Mangle for 10% boom boom. Major Glyphs are a little harder to choose as they are not too good either of them. We're gonna take always the Glyph of Mole because it is a free cleave, but the other two major glyphs you have three equally bad options depending on the situation. You can take the Frenzied Regeneration Glyph to turn the ability into a 30% healing received buff. It is amazing in raids, but it is pretty useless if not awful in dungeons, so make sure not to go to heroics with it. The Glyph of Rebirth gives your battle res a full HP heal, so every raid is gonna want you to get it. And the Glyph of Fairy Fire gives you more range to pull, it is useful in dungeons, it is pretty useless in raids. Choose any of these three and you're gonna be fine. Finally you have three viable minor glyphs. The glyph of challenge in Roar reduces the cooldown of your AOE taunt by 30 seconds, which makes it probably the only minor glyph in the history of minor glyphs that is actually useful. Then the glyph of dash and the glyph of unburdened rebirth because all the other minor glyphs are even more useless. Now your stat priority is pretty simple, your first priority is getting a nice stamina pool. I cannot tell you how much exactly you are gonna need because each tier has different requirements, but the rule of thumb is simple. If you have enough stamina to survive two hits of a boss in a row, it is time to focus on your next stat, which is agility. The feral tank is all about agility, everything you do as a tank is made better with agility. You get attack power for your savage defense of mitigation, you get dodge which is very important as well as crit which procs your savage defense more making you even tankier. I can hardly overstate how good agility is. In almost any situation you take agility over anything else. But you want a hard number, right? Well, every point of agility is worth 0.72 dodge rating and 0.55 crit rating at the same time. So as a rule of thumb, 1 agility is as good as 3 dodge rating or 6 crit rating, which are the 3rd and 4th best stats respectively. As a matter of fact, you can take DPS leather with agility on it, then you reforce the other stats to dodge and boom, it is tanking gear now. And finally you have mastery, which gives you more absorb of savage defense and that's significant, don't get me wrong, but don't go out of your way to get it, it is not that good. Now that you got your character set up, this is how you play. If you get the chance, drop a rejuvenation on you before charging in as it is free HP and threat. For single target we're gonna use Mangle on cooldown, then we are gonna apply one stack of Lacerate and make sure to refresh it. We use Trash on cooldown, then we use Pulverize and we make sure to refresh it when it wears off. We gotta make sure that by the next pulverize in 18 seconds we already have 3 charges of lacerate so we get the maximum bonus. Once all the debuffs are laid up you can pop berserk to spam mangle for a lot of damage. Berserk makes your lacerate refresh your mangle so you can spam it without a cooldown almost and it doesn't cost any rage either. And on top of that it makes the mangle a clip that hits 3 enemies at once. If you have all the debuffs refreshed, you can drop your lacerate as a filler and mull if you have excess rage on top of that. Or in the case you are low on rage, you can also drop fairy fire as a filler, it is decent threat and you need to keep it up anyway. Fairy fire is also your only range pulling tool, so this is probably how you're gonna start most of your pulls in heroics. 
The AOE rotation is also very easy. You use trash on cooldown, then you use swipe on cooldown, unless you are fighting only two mobs, in which case you wanna prioritize mangle first. Also remember, like I just said, that Berserk will make your mangle hit three people, so if you get Berserk up, just prioritize mangle on top of anything else. And if you get any rage left, you can maul too. Remember it is a cleave now. There are two debuffs that you wanna keep up at all times. First is Demoralizing Roar, which reduces the damage that the mobs do to you, very important. And the second is Fairy Fire, reducing the armor of your target. You use Fairy Fire in your rotation quite a lot, so this one is a lot easier to keep up. Almost any mob is tauntable in Cataclysm, and luckily you have now two taunts at your disposal. One is your normal taunt, Growl, and the other is your AoE taunt, Challenging Roar. Now your defensive cooldowns are pretty simple, because just like in Wrath of the Lich King, the Feral tank is very bare bones. You have only Survival Instincts, which is the same as the Guardian of Ancient Kings of the Paladin, 50% defense for 12 seconds on a 3 minute cooldown. Then you have Frenzied Regeneration, which increases your HP by 30% for 20 seconds, and it can also be either a self-heal or a healing received increase, depending on if you take the Glyph or not. And finally, Bark Skin is a 20% damage reduction for 12 seconds on a 1 minute cooldown. Down. And that's it! Well, Feral Charge is an interrupt and so is Skull Bash. Actually, to be fair, the cooldown of your charge is a lot lower now, so it is a decent mobility tool. The problem is that it is your only mobility tool. Well, I guess you do have Dash if you wanna turn into a cat and die. For professions, there is two that are leap and bounce ahead of the rest. This is leather working for 130 agility or 190 stamina on your bracers depending on what you wanna stack first. And then you have blacksmithing which gives you another gem socket in your gloves and your bracer for a combined 100 agility. Enchanting, mining and inscription are viable alternatives, but they offer a smaller bonus. Gems are easy because in Cataclysm socket bonuses are for big, fat noobs. You are only gonna be using three different gems. For meta we are gonna take the Austere Shadow Spirit Diamond for 81 stamina and 2% armor, which is, as you know, bears have the highest armor in the game, so 2% armor is a lot of armor. Then we are gonna take the Delicate Queen's Garnet for agility or Shifting Shadow Spinal if you want some stamina. And we never take anything else, got it? For consumables we are gonna eat the Skewered Yield for free agility and stamina. We are taking the Flask of the Winds for agility, and if you are getting diabetes from all the agility energy drinks that I'm telling you to take, well too bad, because we are gonna take tall beer potions for even more agility. And may God have mercy on your pancreas. And this is a list of all the enchants you should get, you can check it out in the description. I also dropped the pre-rate best in slot list in the description in case you wanna plan out your gearing too. And if you do not want a North American hibernator animal breaking into your house to steal all the honey, you better subscribe to this channel or may the lord get you.